In this video, we'll look at a few more basic introductory techniques that you need to know to get started in Premiere Pro. So the first thing I'd like to show you is that you can open up different workspaces. So a lot of the time what we'll be doing is just editing. So if you click on workspaces and down here and select editing, it opens up the panels that you will be using the most when you're just doing basic editing. So what that does is open up this panel up here called the source panel. You can also open up this panel by just double clicking any of these. Um, and what that lets you do is to, instead of just dragging on from this panel onto the timeline, the entirety of the clip, you can choose how much of the clip you want to actually drag onto the timeline. So it's very easy to use. Um, you use these little brackets here to find a spot. So let's say I've just moved the player head up there. And I'll say that's where I'm going to go in and there. I'm marking the out. And by selecting just that part of the clip, that's all that will be imported into the timeline. There's two ways you can do that. You can drag video only or the audio only. So if I wanted to drag the video over here, I'm just going to put it onto the second video track here. And you can see it's only selected just this smaller portion. So that's a really useful panel to use. Um, the other thing we might want to do is when we've got a clip like this, we've got two clips already on the, on the timeline and we want to get that clip in between the two. We can fiddle around, move that one over until there's enough space to move that one down there. But there's a much easier way of doing it. And there's a few different ways. The way that I find most easier, uh, most easiest is to click on the clip, hold down control, and we've got to make sure that our player head is in the right spot. Let's try that again. I'm going to grab the clip a little bit further ahead. So clicking on the clip, hold control, and then dragging it down. And what that's done is inserted it. So it hasn't um, gone over. It hasn't overwritten that other clip. It's just pushed it further down the line. So that's very, very useful. It'll save a lot of time. Um, okay, so let's look at how you might import some or add some titles. At the moment, I can't see the title um, tool in our little tool section here. So I just need to drag this up a little bit and there it is there. The T stands for title. So if I wanted to put a title there um, or on this clip here, that one might look a bit better. I just select the clip or select the area, put the player head where you want the title to go. Hit the T and then bring it up into the actual preview area up here and click on the screen. It doesn't really matter where you click on the screen because later on you can move it, but it creates this little tiny text box here. So, and then you just simply type in uh, introduction to Premiere Pro and then if you go to the select tool, you can then move that wherever you like on the screen. Okay, so what you can see is done down here is it's created a separate video track just for the title. So even though that's where you put it on the timeline, you could actually move it wherever you wanted to on the timeline down there. Okay, the other thing you can do is if you want for some reason uh, the same title to stretch across multiple clips. I think by default it's a five second uh, video track that it makes. You just stretch it out for as long as you want um, and it will last for as long as you want or make it as short as you want. Okay. So it's not a very interesting title just yet. So what we'd want to do is to open up a window that lets us to manipulate the title a little bit. And that window is called Essential Graphics. So we go to Window, select Essential Graphics, making sure that the title that we want to edit is selected on the timeline. Up here, we click on that to make sure that that's the title that we are um, editing. And then as we scroll down the window, we've got all of our options 
of how we can uh, fiddle with it. A lot of these things you won't really use. Um, there are some basic things there that you'll be familiar with from using word processing software, um, centering and justifying it to the left or the right. We can change the uh, scale of the text, sliding that up or down. Um, we can change the opacity of it up here. This is actually triggers some animations, those ones. They're a little bit more tricky. We can, of course, change the font um, to choose something a little bit more interesting. Anything that you've got installed on your laptop will uh, appear here. Um, so whichever one, simple matter of just clicking on it and it changes it. Of course, some fonts are different sizes, so you'll have to keep rearranging it um, to fit. Okay, so then we've got some other options here. We can make it bold or italic or um, a few other options here. Here's where we've got some spacing options. So we can want it to, if you want it to spread out the words and the letters a little bit, you can increase that like that. If you ever do anything like that and you go, no, I don't like it, simple, normal keyboard shortcuts to undo, control Z, or just go up to edit and go undo. And it'll get it back to the way it was. Um, and it's still not quite appearing on the screen. I'll just make it a little bit smaller. Okay, any of these that have got a number on them, you can click on that and just type it in as well. So if I want that to be 80, for instance, sometimes a little, little bit easier than um, scrubbing back and forwards with your mouse. All right, so it's white, the background's a little bit white, so we might need to change the color. If you click on color there, um, I don't know, what. Maybe pink will stand out a little bit. Okay, let's see what that looks like. It looks pretty horrid, but you get the idea. Uh, stroke, if you activate stroke, that puts a line around the outside of your text. So let's just see what black looks like. Now we've got a black line around that horrible pinky purple color. Um, background, if you select that, it'll fill in behind the text. Uh, you might want that if you're trying to create some sort of like a, a news uh, media style um, caption. I don't think it looks very good though. Um, shadow, however, shadow is pretty useful if you want to make your titles just pop out of the screen a little bit. It does it exactly uh, like Microsoft Word does, um, just puts a little bit of shadow beneath the, the letters and you can control all those different settings there, how big the shadow is, what angle it's thrown at, um, when it starts to fade away, all those different things like that. Okay, so there's um, lots of things that you can do to make a title really interesting. Then, of course, all the um, effects can also be applied to titles. So before, in the previous video, we looked at things like video transitions. So if you wanted to have that title fade in and, in and out, let's open up the effects again. Um, we go to dip to black is Premiere Pro's um, fade in and fade out transition. So we can just drag it on the start of the timeline and drag it onto the end of the... Now my mouse has just done something a little bit funny there. I'll just try that again. So now we have a dip to black and a dip to black saved on each end of that um, title. You couldn't really see it because it's at the start of the track, which... Now for some reason it's applying that dip to black to the entire clip, which is a little bit of a bug. Um, so to avoid that, we can actually just select that, select that, delete it, and we can go up here wasn't intending to show you this, but this is how we can use uh, keyframes. So we want to change the opacity so that this title appears to fade in and out. So you see when I move the play ahead from the timeline, it's also moving up here. So vice versa, when you move it up here, it moves down there. So I'm going to put a keyframe in there. So I'm going to use opacity. Opacity means how see-through the image is. 
So to trigger the keyframes, you need to hit that little clock icon there. And as soon as you do that, it automatically puts in what's called a keyframe. A keyframe is the place on the timeline where you want some animation to occur, a change to occur. So here, that keyframe, it's related to that value 100%. So that's saying at that point in the timeline, the title will be 100% visible, which is fine. I'm going to just take the player head backwards, click that little diamond icon. It's going to add in another keyframe. And now I'm going to drag that all the way down to zero. So now what it's done is it's animating between 0% and 100%. You see, now it faded in very quickly, so I can just click on that second keyframe and drag it out a little bit more so it fades in a little bit more slowly. Okay. And then you can do the same thing at the end. We want it to fade from 100% to 0%. So we've already got those values there in the timeline. If I just control C, control V, that's copied that keyframe that was selected to this spot there. I'm just going to move that across a little bit more, give myself a little bit more space. Okay, and then at the very end of the clip, we wanted to go to zero, so we could, you know, go back and copy that other one. However, it's just as easy sometimes as to go add a new keyframe in. I'm just going to click on that, hit zero, hit enter and it's going from 100% visible to 0% visible. Okay, so it should have worked before, that dip to black should have just faded in and out. Um, it's a little bug somewhere in Premiere Pro's coding that didn't let that work. Okay, so that's a really useful tip anyway. So we've got a title on there, we've got some clips. Let's say that that's all that we wanted to do to the video, we would, uh, if we wanted to export it, before we export it, let's just do the render, render into out. Haven't done too much to this clip, so the rendering process will take not too long. This is just an estimate. You get really worried when it says something like 10 hours. Okay, so the rendering is finished. Nice green line along there. That means everything has been finalized. All the effects have been applied. Not that we did very much to the tracks anyway. Okay, so let's say we're done with that video. We now want to export it. So Premiere Pro now has this uh, really easy to access export um, window up here. So you can just hit that. Takes you to this new area. First of all, you need to change the name. It always gives the uh, project the name of the first clip that you put onto the timeline. So let's just change that. Intro to Premiere Pro. Um, just check that where it's saving to, that's where you want it to save to. It should have set it up on your laptops to save to your documents. There should be an Adobe folder in your documents folder, um, but you might want to set it to save to a USB or somewhere else, okay? H.264 will be your standard um, encoding that we'll use for our files. That's kind of like Blu-ray quality, which is pretty good. Uh, you can scroll down there and you've got your, all these different types of um, files that you can save as. Oops, and I've just accidentally closed that window by pressing escape. Okay, so we go back into it. Just do those things again. Intro to Premiere Pro, okay. Um, a lot of these things you don't need to worry about. This is for sort of people who are working in the industry to get in and fiddle with the settings. Um, but over here, um, we can just simply go export, okay. And that should be the end of the process. It'll take a little while. Uh, of course, depends on how much you've got in the timeline and what you've done to it. So let it run its course, and then you should have a video that will pop up in your uh, Adobe fo folder in the Documents folder. Okay.
that's a very positive sign there. So if you then navigate to uh, Documents, Adobe, Premiere Pro, that's this version. When Premiere Pro updates, it'll create a new folder there um, if it's a, a different um, version of the program. So, and here it is, Intro to Premiere Pro, and it should play, you could just double tap it. And there it is, okay. You never really know what the video looks like until it's exported and you watch it um, once it's been fully exported. So even then you might think uh, that the video editing process is done, um, but you might realize that there's been some terrible mistakes have occurred and you need to go back and fix a few things up. I would definitely go back and choose a different color for that title, for instance. Okay, year 11s, give it a go and see if you can get to the part, uh, part of the process where you're exporting and viewing